Welcome back everybody, it's Jackie and I'm here with my um, Saturday um, 100 day project but it's Tuesday. Um, I couldn't do this on Saturday, um, we had guests over the weekend so this is my seven from last week. Um, these were inspired I think by Ruby and Pearl. Oh I should write it down. Um, I think it was Ruby and Pearl um, and I wanted to use up some of my Tim Holtz um, you know larger pieces of ephemera so that's what I've done but I've used my own photographs um, and bits and bobs so journal cards this week so this is I've just left them as they were you could back these onto plain card to put them into a um, journal so we've just got um, a photograph uh, this is just a little clipped on um, botanical card. I've done um, glossy accent, a little tag there with glossy accents on it and a little dangle, also glossy accents, um, some ruffle along the top and the tab um, here at the bottom. This is actually a replica of um, a photograph that I've got, a family photograph. <laughs> I think I might have had some crazy aunts at one time great aunts. So there we are, that's number one. A uh, very similar layout for all of these, so I'll whiz through these. Um, this is my uh, great-grandparents. Oops, that one's got twisted around. Not sure who this is. That's a photograph, a found photograph, a, a genuine old photograph. As is that one. Just put a bit of college collage on the back of some of them just to um, lift it a little bit. Again, another old found photograph. This is one of the Tim Holtz um, cards, found relatives. And this is another genuine, looks like 1950s photograph from my collection. That's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, I'll do a little quick tutorial on how I put these together um, just now if you want to carry on watching. Okay, so I've got my Tim Holtz backing um, and an old photograph. Um, this is my mother um, holding a horse and I don't know who that is, definitely not dad. So this is prior, certainly prior 19, early 50s, maybe around 1949, 1950. Um, I am going to cut this card down a little bit. It's a bit, um, it's a bit too wide. So I'm gonna take a section of this side, make it a bit more manageable. And the first thing I do is place the photograph roughly where I want it, remembering we're going to have a ruffle along the top. And I've set all these um, slightly offset just for a change. I'm very, I tend to do things um, very straight a lot of the time, but uh, this time I've offset it. And just to hold it in place, I'm going to glue stick it on there. If you want to add some collage, now's the time to do it. Um, so I've got a couple of tickets here. Um, this is a faux ticket. This is a real one. So I'll probably do something like that. Um, so let me just get a glue book. putting a little higher remembering that we're going to have a, a label tab here and this one just adds a bit of interest to this corner sorry I'm speaking downwards so 
Um, I think some people have problems hearing me, but um, all I can say is you'll just have to turn up, <laughs> turn up your whatever it is you're using. So I'm going to zigzag around here, but first of all, I want to put the tab on the side and I'm using this um, We Are Memory Keepers tab punch. Um, and I want something that's going to stand out. I was going to use the bit I'd cut off, but is that going to stand out enough? Probably not. We'll try it. I don't like that, so you'll have to bear with me while I just search for something. Grabbed a bit of scrapbook paper and let's go, let's go for a bit of colour on this one. So you can put that down there. And I've also picked out a word from the Tim Holtz um, chit chat. So I quite like that. That's to me, that's perfectly fine. So I am going to, I'm not going to zigzag. I think I'm going to straight stitch. Um, this in place as well. So for a change I'm going to try and bring my sewing machine in so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so here we go. I'll just use this little John Lewis one. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, the leads got caught. Hang on a minute. There we go. Right. Sorry about that. Got it set on quite a long stitch. Um, Sorry if you can see my head there. I've got the iPad quite close so that um, hopefully you get a good view but also can hear what I'm saying. Um, anyway, that's stitched on with a straight stitch and then I want to put the ruffle across the top here. Um, and I've just done a strip of, so this is cool because this tones in beautifully with that um, and the pinks. So. I don't do anything fancy with this. I'm just literally going to um, stitch this across with a zigzag. So I start it off like this. I want to just go across the top. So let's bring the sewing machine in again. Set it to a zigzag. Make sure I'm on the card. And then to create the ruffle, as I go across, um, you saw me do the bend the first one or fold the first one. So let me just anchor this. And then I just use this little pokey tool just to fold as I go along. Sure. 
should. Let's cut that off. Let's get my better scissors, fabric scissors. And that's really all there is to these. Um, did a little dangle. I did a little dangle on the uh, originals and I'll just show you roughly how I put that together. I've got this tiny punch, this might be a woodware one, yes, and I cut out three little card, just thin card um, tags and um, a pretty one, a bit of scrapbook paper. And I glue these together. I like my um, dangles, the tags I use on dangles to be quite sturdy. So just pop those together. And I probably normally use a white glue PVA for this, but um, it'll be fine. A uh, glue stick will hold it fine. It's just a bit messy. those together like that and then I just mark where I mark my um, little hole actually I haven't done that great but never mind and then I've got a tiny um, I don't know one eighth maybe or sixteenth uh, little punch here just line that up with my pencil mark if you can see it As I say, I would glossy accent that normally, but obviously I haven't got time to let that dry. Um, glossy Accents is a Ranger product that adds, um, sort of finds it own, its own level when you put it on something and um, it gives it a shiny finish, which is quite nice sometimes. And then I've got a tiny little dangle, which I've made in a similar way. And I'm putting them onto a jump ring. And then using one of these little pins and I've learned from experience that if you put it in backwards it seems to work better Look at that through the layers I'm going to try and fasten that doing there we go and there's our little dangle and the finished um, journal card so I hope you like it um, I might be crooked on here I'm not sure <laughs> it's all a bit ad hoc um, but there you go quite simple to make and I'm sure you can come up with your own variations on that so thank you for watching and I'll see you all again soon